So welcome everybody, good day to all of you from across the world. Um, welcome to what is the second WLJ member update webinar of, uh, of this year. Um, so I'm just going to give a quick introduction to this before handing over to the team, um, but just a few points to note. Um, so as the name suggests, this is an update. Um, it's an update on the key activities that we are doing uh, on behalf of you, um, our members. And that's really first and foremost what it's about. It's about informing you of the activities that we're doing um, and to hopefully give you insight into some of the stuff um, that we're working on. Um, it gives you a chance also to get more deeply involved um, if you wish. Uh, there are many working groups that are managing all of this stuff. Um, it's again, it's an update, so we won't have time for interactive discussions. If you do have anything you want to say, I mean, you can always put something in the chat box and if we have time, we'll get back to you. Uh, but alternatively, uh, you can always contact us at WLGA. Um, in terms of housekeeping, please keep yourself muted if you're not uh, talking. And for most of uh, the participants in the meeting, that's going to be the case. Um, the uh, If you can just go to the next slide. You can see here the agenda. Um, so the agenda of the meeting essentially uh, is split into four 30 minute blocks, which cover the four goals that we have, the four main areas of activity. Uh, if you look at the second point, which is a restatement of WLGA antitrust guidelines, um, I just have to inform you and advise you that this is a formal WLGA meeting, so it'll be held according to our antitrust guidelines. That means that we can't discuss any company specific information uh, any commercial, uh, any commercial data, market shares, pricing, um, etc. And I should also let you know that the webinar is being recorded. Now, before passing on, I just want to just to kind of reiterate and restate that safety is um, one of our top priorities. Always has been. In fact, one of our four principal goals in the first session today is safety and business improvement. So safety is an integral part of what we do. All of our meetings begin with a safety moment. Um, I would encourage all of you to do the same. Um, it's more than just walking the talk. It basically ensures that the first thing that we think about is safety. And really that's the reflex that we want you all to have. And with this, uh, what I will do is now pass over to David Tyler from WLGA. He's the, he coordinates the safety and business improvement goal, and he will kick off the sessions today. OK, thank you. Thanks very much, James. And um, I've just flicked through quickly the other part of the agenda. So we've got a full house and um, the next two hours, it's going to be pretty intense. But uh, as James said, the first thing that we do is uh, is have a safety moment and uh, John Taylor from the um, Liquid Gas Europe, he's the sustainable um, manager for uh, Liquid Gas Europe, will give us our safety moment for today. So, John, over to you. Okay, thank you, David. Could I have the next slide, please, uh, David, if you don't mind? Okay, thank you. Uh, so, uh, okay, so, uh, moving slowly downstairs is the rather cryptic uh, title of, of what I wanted to talk about. And for this, really, uh, what I'm referring to is mindfulness. Uh, so first of all, moving slowly, I've got, I have a confession to make uh, straight away, and that uh, I move slowly. I am not a fast guy. OK, when I was at school, when I was 14, 15, in our technical drawing lessons, my nickname was Speedy. And that wasn't complimentary. That was a sarcastic nickname. OK, but I don't mind. I don't mind. I'm old enough now not to be bothered uh, by, by sarcastic nicknames. I drive slowly. And when I pack away, when I pack my clothes and my, and my belongings to travel, I do it slowly. OK. Rarely do I forget my toothpaste and rarely do I forget my toothbrush. I don't like forgetting things because I don't like the stress that it produces. So moving slowly is something I do and moving slowly is something I would encourage others to do. As an example of where moving slowly would have been beneficial, in 1987 in, uh, in Belgium, there was a terrible disaster 
where a ferry, a roll-on, roll-off ferry, the Herald of Free Enterprise, left the Zeebrugge port with its bow doors open, and shortly after it had set sail, there was a large wave which sank the ferry, okay? 193 people were killed. One of the reasons for the design of these roll-on, roll-off ferries, you will see if you read the Wikipedia account, is that they were designed for rapid loading and unloading. Now that's a word that bothers me rapid because as I've already told you, I don't do rapid, I move slowly, okay? So that's one example where moving slowly, I suggest would have been beneficial. The other one, and this is a bit personal, but my wife moves very quickly. I move very slowly and sometimes it frustrates her. She's not here right now, but she has had more car accidents than I've had. I've had one in 40 years. She's had one about every year. But please don't tell her because she wouldn't be pleased that I disclose that. The second part of this uh, cryptic title, downstairs. Okay. Now, I do move slowly downstairs, and I think that's important. But when I say downstairs, I'm meaning really it's a metaphor for when you think the job has finished. When you're, most of the accidents that occur in mountaineering is when mountaineers are descending from the mountain that they've already ascended. You start to forget, you start to not notice, you are often less mindful. And mindful is about, mindfulness is about maintaining awareness, okay? And I think that's important. My neighbor in, in, the, in the flats where I live, six months ago, she, she fell whilst climbing downstairs and it resulted in a broken arm and it's still very painful for her. So please take great care when walking downstairs and when finishing jobs. So those are the two things that I wanted to say. Move slowly downstairs, take care and be mindful. Thank you very much. Here endeth my little talk. Thank you, John. Um, great advice uh, there for everybody uh, on, on the call today. And uh, if we move slowly uh, through the next two hours, I don't think we're going to get through the agenda. So we'll try and move slowly with haste, uh, but do it safely. So um, let's move in then to the first session, which is, as James said, the uh, safety and business improvement. And uh, the goal, the, uh, the goal chair for the safety and business improvement is Blaise Edgar. And unfortunately, Blaze is unable to uh, join us today. Um, Blaze is the downstream manager at West Africa and Las Palmas for Oryx Energies, uh, but he's previously held a position as operation and, and HSSEQ director for a couple of years. So Blaze is well versed in, uh, in, in all things to do with safety. And uh, I asked Blaze last night if he could give me a little message and um, he said to me, uh, could you please thank everybody uh, within the membership for their contributions, uh, particularly the sharing of safety incidents? This is a topic that's come up quite recently and um, and being open with the, the lessons that uh, have been learned in such a transparent way. Um, I, I remember Hugh Bars at SHV before he left. He said that there's no secrets in safety. And that's a mantra that we've carried through with this uh, core safety group. Uh, the the, um, the willingness to share information and 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 to help each other um, has has been a standout. So thanks uh, very much, Blaze, for those words. And now let's head into the uh, the agenda. And you can see the first item on the agenda is a brief update on on key projects. We've taken two projects. Um, the first one is uh, the statistical review of Global LPG. This is our flagship document that we have as part of our membership proposition. And uh, I'm going to hand over to Cinch, uh, who will bring, bring us uh, an update on where we are with the review of the contract for the stats. Over to you, Cinch. All right. Yeah, thank you, David. Um, you know, we have been doing the statistical review of Global LPG for, for years. Um, and it's it's a very valuable resource. As, as a former member of WLGA, <clears throat> I used this uh, these data frequently. So just as part of a good good practice of doing business, we're doing a contract review. We put out a request for proposals uh, earlier this year. At the end of this month, those proposals from interested companies are due back to us. 
Um, we have four companies that have expressed interest. So now when, once those come in over the next few months, we'll be reviewing the proposals and um, kind of talking to those companies and making sure that we're delivering the most value we can with the data we provide to our members. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, but we're we're very happy with the the resource today, and we're just as process of good business. We're reviewing reviewing the contract and looking at opportunities. Right. Thanks very much, Cinch, uh, for that update. So we'll we'll hear some news uh, perhaps in July, August. Then once you've had those uh, replies back, um, the the other key update I wanted to to bring to you was um, something that we did um, about a month ago. And you'll see here a QR code. So while I'm talking, if you could get your cameras out, normally we tell everybody to switch their phones off during meetings. But what I want you to do is just take a, uh, a not take a picture, but get your camera focused on the QR code and press the little yellow link to Slido. And that'll bring you into a poll. And, and what we'd like you to do is, is just answer the, the question. Um, so while you're doing that, I'll just briefly explain the background to this. We, we had a, a guide webinar last month on the 16th of May, covering a topic which we covered in last year's guide, uh, which was uh, the transfer of LPG from ships to road tankers to trucks. And this is not a practice that we would ordinarily condone, recommend, but we know it happens. Uh, it happens in circumstances where there is no other safer alternative. And it's been happening for some years. And um, we we have um, recognized that uh, the, com the companies that, uh, yes. that are doing this um, are no, very reputable right. companies. And uh, we have uh, basically leaned on those companies for information uh, yes. about their procedures. Yeah. And we have uh, gathered together the best practice of this uh, of this procedure and put it into a guide. It was Blaze's suggestion that we run a webinar to explain it once it's published. So it was published last year. We ran the webinar in May and we thought we'd get about 20 people attend. It's a very specific uh, topic. Um, and we actually had over 90. And we had an exit poll at the end which suggested that we should do more of these. And this is what the QR code is all about. So if we look at the guides that we have in our library, which you can access on our website, if you if you Google Safety Corner WLGA, you'll come up with our website uh, Safety Corner, and um, you can interrogate that to get these guides downloaded. But what we want from you is um, to pick five of those topics. If you had a choice, which five of those topics would you choose? to run future webinars on. These are one hour webinars that we can organize through the rest of this year and, and early next year. And um, we want to know which ones you want to, uh, to have uh, um, as, as a topic for the future guides uh, webinars. So um, that's the first thing. The, the second thing I want to talk about is the sharing of data. Blaze touched on that at the beginning when, when he gave me that message. We, we meet twice a month with a core safety group. We have um, over 60 people on our, on our mailing list, and typically we have uh, well over 20 people attend twice um, a month, but we have two on one day. So we have an early meeting for the East Zone where we bring in uh, Australia, New Zealand, and Asia Pacific, and we have one in the afternoon in Europe for the rest of the world. And the purpose is to share information about safety, look at how things have happened, look at how look at how incidents have occurred, look at how we might have mitigated those and then produce a safety alert um, in the event that uh, there are some lessons that we can pass on. So this is this is what we do. Um, we rely heavily on public information. So when we get an incident uh, occurring, and this is this is a good example, this happened uh, just a few weeks ago in Pakistan, and it was on the international media, and three people were killed, over 50 injured, and a, a lot of property damage. And it was a cylinder storage area, which um, where there was an incident. And uh, we've been trying to get information about what happened in there, because if we don't understand what's happening in these sorts of events, then we're going to get questioned by uh, by policymakers and um, we need to have answers. So this is why we want to extend this um, this cordon, if you like, to include our members to share information that they have within their organizations. And this will be totally anonymous. And uh, we've, we've had this discussion amongst the group. It's been well supported. 
Um, many companies have needed to go back and check the protocol within their own organizations. And we understand that um, if there's serious incidents in organizations, there has to be some, some due diligence that's done. And often there's litigation as well. Often there's pressure from regulators. So we understand all that, but what we're trying to do is trying to get as much information as we can from members on incidents and near misses that occur within their own organizations. It will be treated anonymously. And if we can get a pooled learning, then we can go back, um, especially if there's some re-recurring incidents that are happening, then we can go back with some suggestions to try and make our business even safer than it is. During those discussions, this last slide on this, during those discussions, we had some feedback from India, from the Oil Industry Safety Directorate. And they said, what's the problem? We do this already. We, we have a website and we actually publish on our website every single incident that occurs within, within the Indian oil and gas industry. And if you interrogate that, and you can do that through these links, you can pick up the LPG incidents and then you can look further and see that they've actually done investigations into these incidents. They look at the incident. They look at the, the, um, the observations from the information they have. They determine the cause or the suspected cause of the incident, and they come up with recommendations. So this is something that uh, already happens in the, in, in the world within our industry. It's an extremely open, transparent uh, um, uh, uh, procedure that uh, the OISD have. We're not asking for this across the whole membership. We're simply asking to say, look, don't give us all this information if you, um, if you don't want to, but if you can share some of it, then we will use it to, um, to share that amongst our group in an anonymous way. So that's the key message on, uh, from us on this project, is, is to try and get more information about what's going on within our own membership. Now, the second part of this uh, update is going to look at diversity and uh, the, the diversity initiative within our industry is headed by Alison Abbott. Uh, she has two, basically two activities going on under diversity. One is women in LPG, which has been running for some years, and the other is uh, encouraging youth, more youth into our industry through the Youth Council. Now, the Youth Council, I think, I hope, are represented on, on the call today. So um, I will hand over in a minute to them. But uh, the first thing I want to do is give you a bit of an update on the women in LPG in the in the absence of Alison. She's asked me to run this through uh, to you quickly. Um, and basically, women in LPG um, has been going now for uh, must be almost 10 years. Uh, we have over three and a half thousand members globally. Um, activities going on this year. There's a global webinar to be held next month. There's another webinar to be held in October, which will be all in Spanish. And um, so far this year, we've got uh, three new role models. And just looking at those photos, there's uh, Jennifer Rayner in the middle there on the right hand side, who some of you may remember. Jennifer won the challenge competition last year, the, the challenge 23 startup competition that we ran in Rome, and she was the winner. And uh, as a result of that exposure, Alison uh, and I spoke to Jennifer and we encouraged her to come on board Women in LPG. And she now is one of our role models in 2024. If you want more information about uh, about uh, uh, women in LPG, there's the link at the bottom of the slide, and you'll get these slides, all of the slides be used today uh, after the webinar. One of the most important parts of development of women in LPG is the establishment of national chapters, and we have uh, those red dots illustrate where the national chapters are at the moment. Um, there's two yellow um, uh, dots there that um, illustrate where we are launching this year new chapters. And one of them is in Turkey this week on Thursday. So Alison is uh, one of the reasons she's not with us today. She's on the way to Turkey with uh, Nikki Brown. So she'll be opening the chapter in Turkey on Thursday. And the plan is that uh, another chapter will be opened in Santiago uh, in Chile uh, on the 19th of August, so in a couple of months time. So that'll bring us up to uh, 13. And then we're looking for more. So we, if, if, if any country, um, go back to that slide there. If, if, if you do not see yourself represented there, I mean, I'm particularly looking at Southeast Asia and Australia, New Zealand. Um, I think we're looking for uh, for new chapters all the time. But uh, let's try and get the, the world covered in a few more red dots uh, this year. 
Um, then finally, uh, the women of the year awards are now open. The, these were the winners last year. And you can see we had women of the year, young woman of the year and the technical groundbreaker award uh, last year. Uh, so these these four ladies were uh, part of the um, uh, the successful uh, awards from last year. And we're now looking for candidates to be nominated or nominate yourself uh, for the Women of the Year um, uh, 2024. So um, that's all I've got to say on behalf of Alison for Women in LPG. And now I want to turn to the Youth Council. Now, the Youth Council was something established um, not so many years ago. The qualifications for the Youth Council was that you had to be under the age of 35 and you had to be part of one of our industry council members. And there are, I think, over 40 now. So technically, um, we should have about 40 plus um, youth council members. Uh, I'm not sure how many we have at the moment, but we certainly have two um, who are hopefully on the line today. And that's uh, uh, Divya and Manny from, from India. Um, Divya's from uh, the Indian Oil Corporation and Manny's with Hindustan Petroleum. So let me ask uh, you guys if you are online and Manny, can I bring you in if you're if you're there? Yes, Stephen. Thank you. So can I hand over to you and then I'll index the slides. You tell me what uh, I'll move on to the next slide and then you can take yes. it up from there and then maybe you can uh, um, you can take us through. Sure. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, happy to be here. This is the second time around that we are participating in the M member monthly update webinars. So right now our youth council has uh, gone through a restructure. We currently have an executive council in place uh, along with the co-chairs. Uh, as we had shared in the previous quarterly update, uh, we have identified three pillars, uh, talent management, safety and new gen communication, uh, under which the entire youth council is divided and everyone is actively participating and engaging themselves to achieve the goals of each pillar. So talent management, we have Pedro and Jeffrey uh, who are heading the team. Safety by Alejandro and Mehdi. New gen communication by Cole and William. Uh, next slide, please. So at present, we have 47 members. We had a couple of new members join the youth council last week with a new industry uh, also joining the industry council. Next, please. So as I shared, the structure today has talent management, safety, and new gen communication as the three pillars. Uh, talent management aims at attracting and retaining the talent. Safety looks into health and well-being. And uh, with new gen communication, we are looking into various uh, communication channels, social media platform where we can advocate about LPG and also try to attract uh, youth to the industry. Can we move to the next slide, please? So the three pillars, as I shared, uh, we have just mentioned it again once again here. I'll go into the first pillar, that is talent management. Uh, next, please, David. So talent management has currently take up, uh, taken up three activities. One is that they are going to carry out one-on-one -on -one surveys, uh, focus uh, interactions, focus group studies to understand uh, from existing members as to why they why they chose to come into the industry, what keeps them in the industry, and what are the factors that attract the youth to the industry. And uh, with if uh, if we would have seen in the previous uh, LPG week, the Youth Council had done a study on reigniting the workforce, wherein we had conducted a study on uh, reasons for attrition, uh, what causes youth to leave the industry. So with that basic input, uh, the team is also trying to identify what are the reasons that attract the youth in an industry. And then uh, the team would come out with some areas of improvement and recommendations for the industry concept. Uh, that's the activity that talent management is currently doing. I would request uh, Divya to please uh, share about the other two pillars. Thank you. Thank you, Manigandan. Good evening, everyone. Uh, so with respect to the other two uh, pillars, a uh, lot of work is already in progress and uh, they are also having regular meetings within the teams. So with respect to safety, health and well-being, uh, right now work is going on with respect to compiling and sharing of uh, best practices that is available in the industry with respect to filling plant, logistics and customer engagement. 
in case of filling plant, work is going on uh, in order to identify some best practices that is in place already, which can be uh, circulated as a as a wide uh, feature to be implemented at all locations that is available across the globe. So one is that, and the other is to promote a proactive approach to safety instead of a reactive approach. So these activities are in progress with respect to safety, uh, health and well-being team. And uh, the last meeting we had the in detail discussion on way forward. And uh, we are going to have a youth council meeting in another two days. So discussions are going to continue in getting this in place and putting it up as a project. Next slide, David, please. In addition to that, with respect to next gen communication, we also have uh, different short form videos getting ready. Some topics that have been identified for creation of these videos in line with the topics like education, advocacy, recruiting and business development. And some uh, snap pilot series of videos are also being put in place, like with respect to introduction to the industries, like for people who are not in the industry, for them to give a fair idea of what this industry is about, what are we talking about, and what is the current challenges and current benefits of coming into this industry. So that is one topic in which the video is being worked on. Then something like new talent acquisition, like we are trying to compare different opportunities available right now in the industry and why this industry is uh, giving you a future. So something and those lines are also getting ready. And the work is also going on for developing a communication comms structure for the new technologies and innovation that is happening in LPG industry currently with respect to renewable and how transition fuel are, are actually going to play a role in the near future to come and also with respect to the social impact that this fuel as a transition fuel from solid liquid fuels is bringing in which is actually causing a social impact and uh, improvement in health and well-being of the customer or the person who is using this fuel for his daily use so we are trying to create some uh, visual representation of all these topics so that it will actually create a better impact. So in line with the work that is going on with talent management and uh, your safety uh, teams, uh, next new gen communication is going to help convey better to the larger group that we are going to look at. So we are also working on um, making this into one single project so that we can present it during the LPG week 2024 that is going to happen in Cape Town. So that is basically the update of uh, Youth Council that has happened in the last few months. Thank you. Divya, thank you very much for that very clear update. And, and also to you, uh, Manny. Um, yeah, we look forward to getting some feedback from you. And, and just to mention that uh, I think a lot of people know already that um, Mehdi um, and uh, Alexandro from uh, Abastille, uh, Mehdi from Aqua Group, they're both uh, focusing on that safety pillar. And both of those guys uh, attend the safety core meetings that we have uh, every month. So it's really good to have them integrated into that and, and have their, their new ideas um, uh, on, on how we can improve safety in those three areas that you talked about. So we now come to the close. And before I do close and hand over to Tamsin, I just want to give you some feedback. Um, thank you very much for your, uh, for your voting on the polls. Um, just to let you know that uh, we've got over 30 responding and uh, we had uh, cylinder management was actually voted as one of the top five by 74% of you. And uh, LPG consumer safety was second. So 68% of you voted to have that in your top five. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll give you um, more updates uh, once we close the poll off in, a, in about a 24 hours time. But um, thanks for the feedback. Um, some really interesting uh, results there because cylinder management and consumer safety, very much part of the expansion of LPG in regions like Africa, as we heard uh, earlier this year with the uh, uh, the clean uh, cooking for Africa workshop uh, run by the IEA. That's going to be a very, very important uh, topic because uh, we're dealing with 1.2 billion people who have never seen LPG before. So I think there's some work to be done in that area, and uh, hopefully we can cover that uh, in the future webinars that we hold. 
Thank you so much. And on behalf of uh, of myself and Blaze and everybody else who's participated in this last half an hour, um, I'd just like to now share my screen and stop it and uh, pass it over to Tamsin, who will take up uh, the communications update. Uh, so over to you, Tamsin. I'm going to stop sharing now.